Hey everybody, Ron Roy here, and today I want to showcase my Cold Rage Cleave Berserker belt. The build is pretty fun to play, it's strong, and it can survive pretty well in the endgame encounters, while freezing all the enemies on your screen constantly. It also has 100% spell suppression, it has about 60% evade, and it has a lot of armor as well on top of it. You also have 25% of block, which leads us to pretty decent survivability in almost all the cases. Paired with the decent damage that provided by the savior, instant shock, chill and other bonuses. So talking about pros and cons of the build. The bigger pros here is pretty much the AoE, because the build is barely melee at the same time. The decent defenses such as 100% spell suppression, block and decent armor together with evasion is a pros as well. You can also chill and freeze the whole screen which feels amazing because enemies can't attack you when they're already frozen. DMG is pretty great as well, especially when you have both clones up and when you have rage. And talking about the cons, I would say the biggest issue is the way that you need to stack rage to do the damage and to have the AoE. So if in some condition you can't stack rage quickly, it could become a pretty decent issue. Abyssus Burgonet and lower physical defenses are pretty much a con as well, because you're still afraid of the physical damage if you can't evade, block or, or suppress it. The build also can feel a little slow if you don't have any kind of range, because movement speed pretty much comes from the rage itself. And the last one probably would be the inability to off-screen the enemies. The AoE is great, but you still can't hit only the stuff that you can see, which could be annoying in some maps. So talking about how the build works, the most important part here is Cleave of Rage. It gives us unique passive uh, 0.1 meters to radius per 5 rage. That way we can stack a pretty big radius reaching almost whole screen with our AoE, pretty much almost instantly freezing all the monsters since we are doing cold damage. The biggest issue of that is that we will need to stack rage for it to work. So on top of that we are using different ways to convert our physical damage to cold damage. It's 25% of physical damage converted to cold on the gloves, 34 of physical damage converted to cold as a second glove modifier. We are using cold mastery for 40% of physical damage converted to cold. Early game, if you don't have an option, you can pretty much use Rim Sorrow to just convert all your damage to cold. On top of that, we are stacking different approaches to rage. We are using rage at our one hand attacks, we are using Bear's Girdle for maximum rage as well. And we are trying to pick rages pos if possible in the tree itself. So after that, we are using Yoke of Suffering which gives us 10% increased damage for each type of ailment you have inflicted on your enemy. It also gives you a unique approach for your damage to shock enemies with any kind of elemental. We are doing cold damage and that way we can pretty much shock enemies with our cold damage, which provides a pretty decent increase of our DPS. On top of that we are using uh, Relicash, because that way we can get free charges in almost all situations. And the last part, and just like a cherry on top, we are using the Savior Legion Sword. It provides us with reflections that are pretty much double our damage. Together they are doing the same damage that our main character. That way we can do a significant damage in almost all cases, and even if we are falling a little behind or trying to move back to survive, reflections are still standing there and doing a significant damage as well. So, on top of that, we are using different mechanics to pretty much survive better. The build has 100% spell suppression, the build has grace to survive better, and even in hideout, our estimated chance to evade attacks is around 57-60%, to 60%. and we are also using determination, because that way we can tank physical damage much better. So, all of those mechanics together, providing a pretty decent survivability, because we are also using Taste of Hate, for example, to get physical damage from hits taken as cold, and stuff like that. The biggest hit to survivability that we are using Abyssus is a mid-Burgonet, because that way we are just receiving a huge bonus to our damage. But 
they are receiving more physical damage taken as well. However, it's pretty much compensated with grace, determination, and a lot of sources that will help us to receive physical as some kind of elemental, such as bonuses of the body armor and stuff like that. So talking about our three, the most important part here is reaching Flanks of Frost and getting Cold Mastery passive if you don't have Rim Sorrow, because that way we'll pretty much convert our physical damage to cold damage. On top of that, we will need to use a lot of tattoos to reach spell suppression. So tattoos of Ramako Shaman is definitely recommended. You will need to change a lot of dexterity nodes. It pretty much helps us to cap our spell suppression and it will feel much better in the gameplay thanks to that. On top of that, we are also using some basic stuff such as Deadly Reparty at the Cluster Jewels because it can provide us with additional chance to block attack damage. In that approach to the build, we can pretty much get up to 25% of block, which feels pretty decent, to be honest, and protect us even better against physical hits from enemies. We are also stacking different types of armor everywhere and going for stuff like ambidextry and twin terrors to pretty much boost our damage with dual wielding. There's also one thing that I recommend heavily in that approach because I think it works just amazing. It's a part of the large cluster jewel called the Devastator. The Devastator will pretty much provide enemies killed with attack hits, have 15% chance to explode, dealing a tenth of their life as physical damage. I think it's a pretty decent node and it could help you in different scenarios, pretty much killing literally every scene on screen with just a few big hits. So talking about our unique items, I would say the one that I recommend to start with is pretty much Beer's Girdle. It's just an amazing belt that costs literally nothing, just like a few chaoses, and it provides you with maximum rage and physical damage increase per 10 rage, which is pretty decent. It also can give you some health, which is nice as well. On top of that, I really recommend to use Polaric Devastation or Polaric. Because covering enemies in Frost when you freeze them is a pretty decent option to pretty much rise your damage, considering that you are freezing even bosses just for like a split second. It still works and you are still covering them in Frost, that way pretty much rising your damage even higher. After that I think this comes the savior. The savior could be pretty expensive but it definitely worth it, because it literally doubles your damage. And if you can get it, it can be up from 10 divines up, and I definitely recommend to get it as fast as possible. On top of that, Yoke of Suffering can help as well, because constant source of shock is just like really good for all your damage, even if you're shocking enemies just for 15%. It also can help with resistances, and enemies take 10% increased damage for each type of ailment. You have inflicted of them, is a pretty good option too. And the last but not the least, and pretty important item is Abyssus as a mid Burgonet. That item pretty much lowers your survivability, but it provides you with huge amount of additional DPS. So I still recommend to use it. That DPS is pretty much nowhere else to be seen, and you can get it from just one item. And the last item there should be Relocation Potions Riveted Boots. It can give you Endurance, Frenzy, and Power Charges pretty much boosting your survivability, at the same time giving you a lot of additional DPS. So, Relocation is about 2 divines right now, and I definitely recommend to get them as well. So, talking about our rare items, the most important rare item should be pretty much the gloves. As a star gloves, you can just use a Grim Sorrow, because they are pretty much making the job done. However, if you are proceeding forward, you probably will want to change it. And I recommend to use a rare with four at least 30% of physical damage converted to cold. On top of that, you can get accuracy rating and dexterity there, because you will need both of those stats. Some life and resistances is definitely recommended as well. After you got such gloves, you will need to roll the amplicit for at least 25% of physical damage converted to cold. I recommend to roll about 15 as a base and ju just then elevate it with orb of conflict because that way it could be much more helpful. And as an X, you can use Rigveld Savagery as your starting item. 
That one is pretty good and could carry you pretty far as well. However, when you will have more budget, you probably will want a rare X. And I recommend to get one with like physical damage, some kind of attack speed and critical strike multiplier. It's also pretty important to use a base that can give you 20 to maximum rage, because that's a pretty decent bonus. And it could help both with damage and AoE at the same time. As your ring, I recommend to just go for intelligence, some resistances, and non-channeling skills have minus to total mana cost. You can craft it on the ring, or you can just like get one with it, it doesn't matter. It's not too important for the build since you are already using a few light taps, however it could help you with maintaining mana just more consistently, so I recommend to get that. And as your body armor, I recommend to get one with some kind of surprise damage, health and mana reservation efficiency. That part could be pretty important because mana reservation efficiency will help you to just get all the auras in. While you don't have it, you can just draw blood and sand, however it's not recommended because it's a pretty decent source of damage. If you can get additional physical damage reduction, or physical damage from hits taken as fire or as lightning there, it could be even better. However, all, all of that is not that important and you can focus on the rest of the stats. So about the Ascendancy, I recommend to get Crave the Slaughter and then Right of Ruin first, because it can give you a pretty decent way to generate rage and it can help you with damage as well. After, after that comes Aspect of Carnage and then you can get the rest. I also recommend to go and get the Blitz, because Blitz can give you about 25% of DPS if your critical strike chance is already decent. So get it from the stones if possible, and uh, it could be a pretty decent option for just two jewel sockets. On top of that, please consider that when you will get Aspect of Carnage, your survivability will be lower than before, so don't be scared by that, it will be compensated later on. So talking about the whole build, I pretty much want to focus on why I choose the cold element instead of just going pure physical. I think the cold provides much more survivability, because you can pretty much freeze everything on screen. It also can stack pretty decently with Yoke of Suffering, which is just an amazing item right now, and this Polar Devastation, which can provide covered and frost, and it's a pretty strong bonus as well. All of that together make cold version much tankier because you can freeze enemies and if enemies are frozen, well, they just can't do damage to you. And I think you can do even more damage because it's much easier to stack different debuffs against cold resistance of enemies, such as Frostbite, for example. I also think that Hatred is pretty much stronger aura than Pride in any case. So. If you are going cold, we can just utilize the Hatred, which provides an amazing bonuses, and I think it's just a stronger version overall, in both damage and survivability. So the flasks are pretty important for that build as well. I recommend to get Taste of Hate as fast as possible, because that way you can boost both your survivability and your damage. On top of that, for single target, I recommend to get Bottled Fate as well. It can give you about 40% damage increase when it's active against bosses or any tough players that you encounter. So just manually click it every time when you see a strong enemy and it will pretty much help you a lot. As a magic flask I pretty much recommend to go with diamond one, together with attack speed and chance to gain flask charge when you deal a critical strike because you will need additional crits there, and granite flasks. Because granite will pretty much boost your physical damage reduction significantly and it's definitely recommended to just avoid heavy hits from physical damage, because we're already using Abyssus. So the Pantheon for the build is pretty simple. You just need to solve the Brain King to pretty much get avoid being frozen, and as a second one, I recommend using Soul Good Cool, because that way we can mitigate some kind of physical damage, because we are getting hit a lot of times if we are not evading the hits. So that was my Cold Rage Clay Berserker build. I think right now it's pretty much almost the best that Melee can offer, and it should be pretty strong in almost all endgame situations. Hope you enjoyed the build as well. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.